did you know? Have you seen this? What's up, everybody? I'm back. I'm here doing my Monday vlog from my car. And I just like this environment better. I think I think better in here. I don't know what it is. Eric and I were talking about that. Something about being in a car that just makes you focus. And also I know there's like zero distractions in here. So um, today's vlog is from my car and I'm going to address the London patient. Um, everybody's been talking about it. I've had, um, I can't even tell you how many times that article has been sent to me about the London patient. And I appreciate everyone sending me the information. It's really funny. Even two weeks after the fact, I'm still getting, did you know? Have you seen this? Um, yes, I've seen it. I saw it the day it came out, very aware of what happened. And so I didn't talk about it much because um, it doesn't, for me, make me feel like, oh my God, this is it. It's going to be over. There's a cure coming. I just, it doesn't, um, go through my brain that way because I know that so much more is involved in regards to a, a cure. It's not that it just happens because they have two people that were cured. It's like, this is a major process. Okay. So let's kind of backtrack a little bit and talk about the first person who was diagnosed with HIV, who also had leukemia, who went in for treatment for leukemia and it included a bone marrow transplant. That was Timothy Ray Brown. I've met this incredibly kind man two times. I met him in Amsterdam and at USCA. And I've had my picture taken with him a couple times and I, um, I've been able to interview him. I mean, he's so nice. He's a, he's a vegetarian and he has, um, by the way, if you hear him speaking, he might sound like he's tipsy. He's not. He has speech paralysis from some of the treatment that was done to him years ago. So, um, don't get that mixed up. He is, um, he's actually, I don't think he drinks. When we went to this bar that we were at, um, I, everyone was kind of having drinks and he didn't, he didn't have anything. Um, and he was very kind of like conscious about what he was eating and all that. So he's a really healthy person. So Timothy Ray Brown, what happened with him is he had leukemia and he had a bone marrow transplant. So the bone marrow, it's in your bones. Um, if you've seen, uh, Oh gosh, you know, if you eat steak, you're going to see that, that squishy white stuff that's, um, that comes out of like the center of the bone. Okay. So that's bone marrow and cells are produced out of bone marrow. So the bone marrow was taken out of his bones. He had an actual transplant from a donor. So this donor actually has something in their bone marrow that is incredibly rare. So I'm, I'm going to read a little bit about it, but what I want everybody to understand is that this is not a practical treatment for anybody in the masses, but it is something to study. It is something that they could look at because it proves that what happened to Timothy Ray Brown was not a fluke because it has worked a second time with another patient and they're following several others that have also been given this treatment by people with this particular mutation. So here's a little bit from the article. The news last week was that a second patient may have been cured of HIV using a bone marrow transplant from a donor with known HIV resistance has brought new attention to gene mutation that many researchers believe is key to ending the epidemic. The CCR5, this is the big one, Delta 32 mutation, that's what it is, which was discovered over 20 years ago, disables the CCR5 receptor on the surface of white blood cells. So HIV uses this receptor almost like a key. It latches onto it to get into the cell. Without a working version of CCR5, HIV is essentially locked out of a person's immune system. This mutation is only common among people of Northern European descent. Approximately 10% of people in Europe and the United States have inherited this from one of their parents, but it is only protected and the 1% who are homozygotes. So only 1% of these people have this actual mutation, meaning they inherited a mutated gene from both their parents. Studies have shown that these individuals are 100 times less likely to contract HIV if exposed to the virus. In the future, this may be a driving force behind gene therapy and vaccines. Okay, so a little bit more about the London patient who is by the way, nameless at the moment. He's been HIV free for 18 months. The men referred to as the Berlin patient and the London patient respectively received stem cell transplantation as a treatment of cancer. So they both had leukemia and HIV. Okay. They were trying to treat the leukemia. That was why they were there. They were treating the leukemia with a bone marrow transplant. Okay. This was not anything that was done because they had HIV. This was all treatment that was done for leukemia. 
Okay, so that's really important to know. And since it worked with Timothy Ray Brown, they've been trying it since with people who have cancer and also are HIV positive to try to get a donor with this mutation. So these transplants are designed to replace cells damaged by disease, infection, or chemotherapy with healthy cells from a donor so that the patient's body can essentially rebuild its immune system. In these cases, doctors choose donors with a CCR5 Delta 32 mutation in hopes that when the immune system is rebuilt with the new cells, it could also fight off HIV without medication. So the treatment, however, is very intense as it requires patients first to kill the existing marrow cells with chemotherapy, so they've got to go through all of that first, or radiation to take drugs to suppress their immune system so that it does not attack the new donor cells. The Berlin patient was later identified as Timothy Ray Brown and has now been HIV free without medication for 12 years. Brown, who was being treated for leukemia at the time, came close to death during his treatment and was even put into a medically induced coma at one point. Researchers tried for years to replicate the success they had with Brown, but HIV kept returning in subsequent patients. Some worried that Brown's success was not proof that the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation was the key to treating HIV as hope, but instead just a fluke brought on by intense, nearly fatal radiation. So it wasn't a fluke. They're actually finding that what happened with Timothy worked. It really did. And it also worked with this other patient. And they're, they're monitoring some other people that are also going through the same treatment. And they're going to see if they also come up HIV negative after. Then in March 2019, researchers announced the success of the London patient, who we all have heard about now, who was asked not to be named. He received a bone marrow transplant to treat Hodgkin's lymphoma. His treatment was less intense than Brown's, and he was never sick, so that's good news. He has now been HIV-free without medication for 18 months. As I stated before, the London patient is one of 38 patients who received similar treatment who are currently being followed by a group of researchers. A second patient in the group has been HIV free for four months. So there's kind of like three of them, Timothy Ray Brown, this man from London, and there is a four or a third, sorry. Um, while experts are eager to see how those patients fare, there appears to be consensus that this treatment is too intense to ever become common, especially in an era when medication can make the virus undetectable and untransmittable. They actually mentioned that in the article. U equals U, undetectable equals untransmittable. That's just freaking amazing. Um, yeah, go to www.preventionaccess.org if you need any more information on U equals U when you are undetectable. You can no longer transmit the virus to your sexual partner. It's been proven. Look into it, people. Um, men with men, men with women, women with men, it won't happen. It won't happen. Still, the London patient's success is significant because it proves that Brown's case was not a fluke, and as such, it puts the focus squarely back on the CCR5 mutation. So they'll probably research more, obviously, on this mutation, which is important for sure. Um, but in terms of a cure, I don't see anything happening um, anytime soon. So it's like, it's funny because everyone writes to me and they say, even somebody wrote and said, you need to go to your doctor and see if you could get a bone marrow transplant. I'm like, um, I don't have leukemia, so that would not be possible. Yeah. So those are like extreme treatment options for somebody with leukemia. Those are not for people who are just living with HIV. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to address this because I've had so many people send me the article and they're so excited. And they said, did you see this? Did you know there's going to be a cure? It's right around the corner. It's really not. I hate to be a Debbie Downer, but it's not going to happen right away. It, this is it, this kind of stuff takes a long time. Science and research and, you know, years of like study and, you know, finally like going out and testing. And it's just crazy. It does take a long time. It takes a lot of money. And, um, I honestly, I just don't sit here and wait for that. I just, I, like I say, I live my life, um, just fine with the way it is. I live with a manageable chronic condition. That's all it is. And, um, I take a pill a day. I'm undetectable. I'm not transmittable. I live a totally normal life. You know, life went on as planned. I'm a happy person. I don't feel sick. I'm not a sickly person. Like really being open and honest about my HIV status for me has been um, very freeing and liberating. And But that's not the case for everybody. I understand that. It doesn't work that way for everyone. I'm very, very, very lucky to be in a position 
um, to be open and honest about it. And I have a lot of support around me in order to do that. I understand those who prefer to keep their status private and for many reasons, it's probably better. And I do understand that as well. So um, with that said, I hope that clarifies a little bit more about the London patient and what it means for people living with HIV. And, um, you know, there's always hope. There's always hope. But it's um, not something that, to me, is anything immediate or around the corner. And um, I'm, like I said, I'm just fine living with the way it is status quo. Even the injections, I'm like, man, whatever. I mean, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, I just take that pill every day and just keep chugging along. So, you know, I mean, I'm almost 50. And honestly, I keep thinking, Christ, I'm like, I'm almost 50. Like I have maybe 30 more years left in me. That's not that long. Like that goes by in a blink. I just had my 30 year high school reunion. 30 years. I feel like I was in high school three years ago. So that in itself is a little terrifying. And so I'm just going to do the best I can with the next 30 years that I have. And, um, and I want to spend every minute of it feeling happy and being feeling blessed to still be on this earth and um, doing all the things I want to do. And um, like I said, if it just means taking a pill a day to be able to do all those things, then that's just fine with me. So, okay, you guys have a great week. I'm going to stop rambling and um, we will see you soon. Please comment, like, and subscribe again. Don't forget about you equals you undetectable equals untransmittable. And um, I need to wear a shirt. I'll do that next time. I'm sorry, Bruce. I have not been wearing my U equals U shirts. It's actually um, St. Patrick's Day today, so I'm dressed in green. And um, I did a live earlier with Eric. But um, <laughs> I need to start wearing my shirt. I will. I'm so sorry. It's, it's nothing intentional. It's just me being forgetful. So, okay, guys. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.